Hello there, my name is Alan Lamont. This is the second video in a series on the Knights Templars. I want to begin by saying, first of all, if you try and research the Templars, there are many books that give accurate information. There's many books that give disinformation. There's a book called The Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, which was an international number one bestseller by Michael Bagent, Richard Lay, and Henry Lincoln. And this book really does go into the Templars, uh, but really ties them to the Priory of Zion, you know, in the sense that the Priory of Zion was in control of the Templars. But then it goes into the Merovingian bloodline, it goes into the fact that, you know, Mary Magdalene uh, gave birth to the child of Jesus Christ, and it goes into really discrediting Christianity destroying the divinity of Jesus Christ, his deity, you know, so that as a man, you know, he produced the child. Well, he did not. Of course not. Of course not. Came for one purpose, that was to die at Calvary, to give his life at Calvary's cross, you know. Christ died for our sins at the cross. That was his purpose. That's why he came. He did not give birth to a bloodline, uh, Merovingian bloodline through history they gave rise to the Templars and so on that's a lie that's another diversion really to take uh, you know attention away from the true conspiracy of course that you know the Templars did destroy the monarchies that attacked them and infiltrated the Vatican and eventually had complete power over the Vatican but they had to create the Society of Jesus in order to do that which was another front organization of course no one which expect that they are Templars, of course, with that name, Society of Jesus. But uh, Ignatius Leola and his company were known as the Knights of the Virgin, also, exactly like the Knights Templar. Now, just to give a bit of history again, when you actually look at the Templars, uh, they're really strong in trade and, and maritime trade. People don't realize that. Okay, this is before the banking system. They were trading in the Mediterranean, uh, building up several seaports in various countries, which are still in use, in fact, today. And through their uh, trade and influence, the Templars brought Eastern goods, silks, and other material spices and foodstuffs, etc., to Europe, uh, and really extended European trade into the Far East as well. And as I said in the last video, the Templars created the banking system, what's known as letters of credit, and other banking practices for trade purposes which are still widely used in international trade in the banking system today. The Templars suffered the first setback really after the last crusade during the period of 1306 to 1314 at the hands of the tyrannical French King uh, Philippi, uh, King Philip uh, had already convinced the weak-willed Pope Clement to move the Vatican out of Rome to Avignon in France and so this move angered much of the Roman church and is referred to historically as the Avignon Captivity. Avignon is spelled A-V-I-G-N-O-N, -N, Avignon. And so King Philip was deeply in debt from failed French wars and had his eye on seizing the amass wealth of the Templar order and held at his chief headquarters of the temple in Paris. I said previously that, uh, you know, across Europe, the Templars had their headquarters known as the Temple, and their headquarters in France was uh, the Temple in Paris. So King Philip coerced and manipulated Pope Clement to issue a papal bull decree disbanding the Templars, but more than that, he went further than that. They not only disbanded, but accused them of heretical acts against teachings of Christianity and so on. Well, that's proven anyway. That the, the Templars did worship Bahamut. They did worship the devil. That's that's the truth anyway. But uh, anyway, thereby you know this bill legally being able to seize their wealth for the French crown. That was the agenda. Was to take their wealth. They were betrayed by the Pope and betrayed by the King of France. And this was the beginning of this conspiracy. So it was really uh, not just a fight for survival, but it was. Revenge, pure and simple revenge. Uh, and over a seven year period under the church's infamous Inquisition, 
Templars were unlawfully seized, tortured, many were put to death. If they did not admit to the lies they were accused of, but you know. I don't believe there were lies actually. I believe they did worship a half of that. You see that on many of the uh, symbols that they've left behind. You can clearly see that. You see the symbol of uh, Bahaphomat. Uh, the most well known, of course, is the one at the Cathedral of Notre Dame, built by the Knights Templar. You have the symbol of Bahaphomat, uh, which is a horned devil with two wings. His right arm is pointing up, his left hand pointing down. Of course, and we also see that Bahaphomat by Eliphaz Levi, and also the symbol of uh, Pazuzu in 700 BC has the same arm gesture. We see it in Washington DC also with Washington with his right arm raised and his left hand down of course. It's the symbol for Satan, Bahaphomat. It's uh, satanic and it also has the pentagram star on the head and it also has the flaming torch of Nimrod atop the head of this Bahaphomat devil. And you also see the Templar pentagram graffiti on many of the Templar churches. Which is really the symbol for the uh, goat pentagram. It's a satanic symbol. So the Templars were Luciferians. Let's be clear about that. But because they went underground, uh, they had to do that, of course, to keep the order alive. That That's obvious. Uh, and these knights were in France. And these knights Templars were also uh, spread across Cyprus. And uh, they were not destroyed. That's the truth of it. Many people in the know know this. I mean, of course, uh, what they did was they just really transferred their order into the religious house orders. They they really hid into these uh, orders like the Franciscans and the Benedictines and so on. They really just, you know, hid in these monasteries. But they also spread abroad to Scotland uh, and Cyprus and various areas across the earth. Uh, uh, predominantly, their sometimes rival order of St. John uh, obviously, you know, we're protecting them as well. But the vast majority of the Templars left France and they formed the Templar parallel orders under different titles, of course, in other Christian countries. And this is when the Jesuits were created by Ignatius Loyola, who was controlled by uh, the bloodline of the Borgia, of course, and the Farnese bloodlines. Uh, the papal bloodlines of Italy uh, supported the Templars and really, you know, funded and supported them to become the Society of Jesus because the conspiracy was that they were all under threat. They could all be abolished. They could all be put to death. And so they wanted to remove the power of the Pope and these cardinals and really bring war against the monarchies, really, for their suppression. Because, you see, at that time in history, the real power behind the Vatican was not even the Pope anyway. It was the papal bloodlines of Italy. It was the Farnese, it was the Medici, it was the Breakspear, it was the Orsini, there was these bloodlines. Obviously not all of them, you know, were ruling the papacy at that time. But you had the Farnese that certainly were. Uh, and, you know, one of them was the Pope, Pope Paul, and uh, many of them were cardinals. And so the Knights Templar had a lot of support after the suppression. And... They also infiltrated Spain and infiltrated the Order of Our Lady of Montesa and Our Lady of Calatrava. And so they were formed out of many of the existing Templar uh, orders, really. You know, So these were uh, religious orders that really supported and protected the Templars. And what actually happened in Portugal under King Denis, uh, the Order of the Templars simply changed its name to the Order of Christ. So that Vatican knighthood, the Order of the Christ today, is actually a Templar order. And it continued operating under another name, you see. This is what they do. This is what they do. And they're doing it today through the Society of Jesus. Uh, still other former Templars, uh, Templars were secularized, as in the sense that they did not appear to be Templars. You know, they were bankers, merchants, they were politicians, uh, and they went into countries and joined and trained as knights in various European wars currently underway, uh, for instance in Scotland. Uh, the papal bull suppressing the order was never read at all due to the fact that King Robert the Bruce was excommunicated by the Pope at the time. 
and you know it's believed that fugitive Templars emigrated to uh, you know Scotland I mean that's obvious that's obvious anyway you have Rosalind Chapel with the Sinclair bloodline obviously you see the the Templar symbols all over that church so they did go to Scotland they went all over the all over Europe that's what I'm revealing here uh, the last of the Grand Masters of the Order of the first period was Jacques de la Moye. He was imprisoned in Paris by King Philippe, uh, opposed to what most historians state as fact. The Order of the Temple did not die. It was not destroyed with the papal suppression and the martyrdom of whom historians call the last Grand Master of the Order. That's also a lie. Jacques de la Moye, uh, who was executed in uh, 1314, was not the last Grand Master. De La Moy transmitted his Grand Mastership to Joannes Marcus Lemenius, who immediately before his death in 1314, Lemenius, who was of a very old age, he was aging and unable to continue as Grand Master, transmitted the Grand Mastership with the Charter of Transmission and Succession to Franciscus Hippolytus of Alexandria in 1324, so that Templar order continued underground. And their purpose was to bring revenge. And so they had a succession of Grand Masters or General Secretaries in France and elsewhere for an unbelievable 400 years, you know, and it continues today, all through history. And they really created the Jesuit Order to be their right arm of revenge, to overthrow the papacy, to overthrow the monarchies. And so this is who the Jesuits are. And that's why the Jesuits were, as I've said in my last video, also expelled by the Pope of Rome, also persecuted by the monarchies, because they are the Grand Masters of the Knights Templar. The, the Templars changed their name. I don't primarily believe that the Jesuits are just, you know, a branch of the Templars. They are the Templars. But what they've done is they really appeared in another name. This is what the Jesuits do. This is what they do all the time. You see the same modus operandi when they created the Illuminati. Same thing. It's a Jesuit Templar organization known as the Illuminati because at that time they were suppressed by the Pope. You see the same uh, modus operandi. Can you see it? The King of France and you know the Pope of Rome uh, putting to death and persecuting the Templars, so they became the Jesuits. The Jesuits are expelled by Pope Clement seventy seventy three. They're persecuted by the kings of Europe. In fact, you know, 83 nations of Europe expelled the Jesuits. So what did they do? Create the Illuminati, and they really infiltrated America to be their headquarters, their temple headquarters. You know, that's what they do. So the Order of the Temple is the society, is the order that controls the world. Uh, and today there are several organizations existing. You know, claiming to be authentic Knights Templar. A lot of them are just low-level Masonic groups, really, you know. You find out with the Knights of Malta, the same thing. You have many, you know, groups that say that they are the true Knights of St. John. Nonsense. A lot of them are just low-level Masons, you know. Uh, so there is schisms, but the actual, <laughs> you know, Templars do exist. They exist as the Society of Jesus, as the Jesuits. And the Black Pope is the Grand Master of the Knights Templar. That's who he is. Ruling over his Grand Magisterium, uh, and uh, you know, and they've called it the Jesuit Curia. It's really the Grand Magistery of the Knights Templar. And, you know, that's the truth. And people talk about the Papal Bloodlines, how the Papal Bloodlines, the Roman nobility of Rome, they control the Templars, they control the Jesuits. Not possible. Not possible. They work with them. No, that's the truth. You have two arms of this monster. You have the Jesuit Council and you have the Papal Bloodlines. And they work, you know, exactly the same. They have the same power. But at the top you have the the Black Pope. You see, once the Black Pope is elected, he has supreme power. 